Welcome to Books in Sum, your go-to for bite-sized book summaries. Women Who Love Too Much by Robin Norwood This book examines why some women get so strung out on emotionally unavailable men. It draws on real-life case studies from the field of therapy in the 1980s and hard-hitting original insights to explore why some women become painfully obsessed with the most unsuitable of men. It also examines why bad adult relationships have their roots in childhood experiences, what substance abuse and bad men have in common, and how to break free from relationship insecurities. The story follows Jill, a 29-year-old law student, and Randy, a handsome attorney, as they embark on a long-distance love affair. After their first passionate weekend together, Randy left Jill's apartment and headed home. But even as he walked through his front door, his phone was ringing. Jill couldn't go one night without telephoning Randy, and before she knew it, she was calling him. This story highlights the dark roots of female insecurity and how we can recover from this most insidious of love sicknesses. Jill, one of the author's many anguished female clients, is a book-bite book example of a woman who loves too much. She developed obsessive feelings for a man and then wrongly labeled that obsession as love, allowing her obsession to control her behavior and emotions. She flew the long distance to his place to spend the weekend with him, but he spent the whole time staring at the TV, getting drunk and ignoring her. Children trauma draws women who love too much to emotionally unavailable men, who often share just one seemingly unremarkable trait. They are all emotionally unavailable. This often means that the men who fit the bill are themselves dysfunctional, as many are married to someone else at the time when the obsession starts. Women who love too much often focus their attention on men who are addicts of some kind finding themselves drawn to alcoholics or drug addicts. This is due to the fact that addicted men are emotionally unavailable and have little capacity to strike up a meaningful relationship. The author has heard the same sad story too many times, as these women grew up with a father who rarely expressed love or affection for them. As adults, these women have unresolved feelings of doubt about their father's love for them, so they go through their romantic lives constantly seeking men who exhibit the same sort of emotional coldness or unavailability that their fathers did. They use sex to try and win their man's affection, but it usually leads to rejection. Trudy, a woman who loves too much, spent her childhood trying to please her workaholic father, a man who rarely tore himself away from work long enough to eat dinner with his family. As a young woman, Trudy spent much of her time yearning after men who were just as unavailable as her father, such as her high school boyfriend, the football fanatic who showed much more devotion to his sport than to her. Trudy, a high school student, tried to win the hearts of two unavailable lovers through sex. She became obsessed with buying special lingerie and reading up on sex tips, and her obsession grew to the point where she was ditching both her friends and her college classes to focus all her energy on their sexual relationship. Her extreme focus on lovemaking was not geared toward sexually gratifying herself, but rather, she felt validated by the men's pleasure. However, her attitude toward sex, this laser-like focus on pleasing the man, was always doomed to fail because sex is no substitute for deeper emotional connection and her lovers remained emotionally unavailable. Women who love too much are often addicted to more than just unavailable men and can develop addictions to other substances such as drugs, alcohol or even sugary foods. These addictions are developed as a coping mechanism to distract themselves, escape from reality, and numb the huge sense of emptiness deep inside. The most important details in this book bite are that for women who love too much, any recovery from their addiction to emotionally unavailable men must also be accompanied by recovery from their addictions. This is because as these women become more dependent on food, drugs or alcohol, they also feel guilty, ashamed and full of self-loathing. This can lead to a vicious cycle of substance abuse, bad relationships and rejection, and the situation can spiral out of control. Brenda is a woman who knows all about the dangers that loving too much can bring when coupled with food addiction. She married an unfaithful alcoholic who resembled her father, and her addictions led to compulsively shoplifting and starving herself. Brenda's downward spiral ended in an arrest for stealing before she finally sought treatment. To recover from this disease, getting help and prioritizing recovery is key. Women who get better from the disease of loving too much are not afraid to reach out and ask for help. The initial step in seeking help can be as simple as visiting the library and borrowing a book, scheduling time with a therapist, or calling the police. The author has found that every woman who eventually gets better has the same belief that recovering from this disease is their number one priority. This attitude is crucial because many women are not used to putting their own needs first and subordinate their needs to their man's. A full recovery will replenish your self-worth and restore a healthy attitude toward men, and after a full recovery, you will be endowed with a robust sense of self-worth. For the first time in your life, you will be able to accept the person you truly are. 
This includes a fundamental and unshakable regard for yourself, such as your physical appearance, unique personality, everything you've worked hard to accomplish in life, and your body. Additionally, your feelings toward men will have changed, as you no longer seek to change any man with whom you are involved. This is due to the fact that you no longer go for men who need changing in the first place, but instead search for stable, loving, and kind partners. When you slip up and find yourself in a destructive partnership, you must take a hard look at it and find the strength to walk away. The key message in these book bites is that it is easy for women with unresolved childhood traumas to repeat the pain of their early life in adulthood. By seeking out relationships with unavailable men, women who love too much become obsessively focused on winning their unattainable love, thereby proving to themselves that they are worthy of the affection denied to them by their parents. Actionable advice is to not bring a traumatic past into the present and to speak up, say what you need for once and look after yourself as well as everyone else. This will lead to a new life of genuine love, where meaningful connections between men and women are grounded in mutual respect, affection, and companionship. We hope you found this summary helpful in your listening journey. If you're interested in diving deeper into the topic or getting your hands on the whole book, be sure to check the description below where we've included links to the book and other related products that may be useful to you. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay updated on our latest book summaries. And feel free to leave a comment with any suggestions or requests for books you'd like us to cover. Thanks again for tuning in and happy listening.